Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about neon and how it's created in the sun and we're also going to talk about how helium relates to neon and how helium is the composition of every essential element in the world and how everything that is an element is just a fusion or combination of one or more helium atoms grouped together. Let's go ahead and see how neon gets created since it's a topic of discussion in this video. So let's take a look here. How does carbon get created? We haven't even talked about carbon, but we need to get to carbon before we get to neon. Remember, carbon is element number six. It has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. Neon has 10. So in order to get to element number 10, we need to fuse up to 10 protons, 10 neutrons, and 10 electrons. And to do that, we need to start with gravity. So what happens is helium plus helium plus helium is equal to a carbon atom. And that's what happens in the sun. In a star, three helium atoms or three helium nuclei are fused together along with their electrons to produce one carbon atom one complete carbon package one complete carbon atom and what happens is a carbon atom can be thought of as three helium nuclei fused together as one so we could stop thinking about it as carbon and just three groups of helium nuclei together with their electrons and that's what carbon is and if we want to make a new element we need to combine another one so we stated that carbon is three helium nuclei fused together with the electrons so if we add another helium nucleus to carbon we get oxygen the reason we're discussing this is because we're getting closer and closer to neon we fuse three helium atoms to give a carbon atom that was the first step three to make a carbon. The next step is a carbon atom, which is three helium nuclei combined with another helium nuclei along with its electrons to produce oxygen. Oxygen can now be thought of as four helium nuclei compressed together. And if you want to make neon, which is the element that we're talking about, you take oxygen and you fuse it with another helium nucleus along with its electrons and you get neon. And that's how we get to the element neon element number 10 if we fuse neon with yet another helium nucleus we get magnesium an element we're yet to talk about element number 12 we'll eventually get to that element but it's awesome to know that in retrospect all of the elements are created on top of each other the reason i started with helium is because it's the most essential element out of all of them every element is composed of helium atoms an element that's heavier than helium is just a combination of helium atoms that add up to that net mass that we're comparing the bigger atom to the helium atom to everything is helium Uranium is helium. That's actually why it emits helium during radioactive decay, because alpha decay, it's just another piece of evidence that shows that everything's just made out of helium atoms fused together. Helium atoms are the Lego blocks of the universe. Neon is element number 10. It is a noble gas and it follows helium on the periodic table below it. Neon is a very important element because we use it for various functions and applications. Apart from the light source that we use it for, we also use it for various things such as lasers for our dashboards on our cars for high voltage indicators and we also use it for lightning arresters that we use for high voltage situations where the electricity overloads the circuits we use that in this case we use neon because neon resists high voltages and we use that to prevent high voltage failure as a result. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at neon's functions uses and various applications throughout history so let's go. We can see here the various types of noble gases that are electrified with high voltage currents and each one emits different types of lights due to the different configurations of the electrons and how they orbit the central atom. So based on that, we get different amounts of light. In this case, we're talking about neon. So here we will highlight it or we will present it with a laser. So here we see neon bright red. The more neon we have, the more pinkish it seems. The less neon, the more reddish. But overall, it emits a red type of light. Sir William Ramsey and Morris Travers were the first ones to take on the endeavor to discover neon, and they did this through fractional distillation, which involved evaporating the neon that they had. Let's see. So neon is a gas. Neon is extracted from the air, so we have gas particles. In order to slow them down, we need to cool them down. Once they're liquids, we can get them into even colder phases. Once we get them into solids, we start evaporating them back. Since there are different densities and different types of particles, 
within the solid itself and the liquid they evaporate at different rates and since they're gases that evaporate at very low temperatures they evaporate very easily due to their differences in molecular structure the heavier ones evaporate more slowly than the lighter ones neon since it's element number 10 evaporates more slowly than the elements oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide and water so it evaporates more slowly and Due to that, we can extract it and separate it at a different time. And that's what Sir William Ramsey and Morris Travers did. And that's how they were able to isolate neon and get it to be an independent element that they were able to identify by making it glow, shocking it with light, and introducing it to the global population eventually. So they didn't exactly shock it with light, they shocked it with electricity to produce light. And that specific light became popular especially during these times. The 1920s and the 1950s, neon lights became a spectacular show, a way to promote yourself, a way to express that you are the business to go to, you are the go-to business. If you had neon lights on your business signs, you were the most popular business on the block and everybody wanted to visit your shop, especially at night when the attractions were full on display and everybody can see your beautiful neon sign. Let's discuss its composition, its usage, its history and how we use it today and how it affects us and we'll go from there. All right, neon. Since it's a noble gas, it doesn't react with itself or any other element in its surroundings. That would explain why we don't notice it in the air when we breathe it. Luckily for us, it's non-toxic, non-reactive, and it's colorless. And that's why it's mixed with the air that we breathe, oxygen, nitrogen, and neon. It's in the air that we breathe. So in order to solidify neon, and helium, noble gases that are normally gases at room temperature, we need to decrease their velocities. So temperature is average kinetic energy. So to decrease temperature, we need to decrease the average kinetic energy of each atom. So neon needs to be decreased to velocities that are slow enough, liquid and no longer gases. We turn neon into liquid and we turn it into a solid. And from that solid, we distill it through fractional distillation and we acquire its properties. Although it has 10 protons, 10 neutrons, and 10 electrons, neon is a gas, so it's not easy to hold in your hands and observe under a microscope. So what do we do if we can't observe and analyze the gas in the current state or form that it's in by default in the natural world? Well, we're going to have to change its current state. How do we do that? Well, we create a machine. A machine that lowers the temperature and average kinetic energy of not only the neon, but all the gases in the air. So let's take a look at how the machine works. So here we have a zoomed in version of the machine diagram, and we're going to analyze it. Just a brief summary on how exactly it goes through the process of freezing the air around it, which on its own is a very, very cool process because you're taking something that's normally a gas, something that you normally breathe, and you're turning it into a liquid, something that you can see, something that you can shake, something that you can even drink, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's so cold in its current liquid state that it would freeze everything around you, including the cells in your body, and you don't want that because your cells don't function at lower decreased kinetic energies or temperatures. Temperatures. So let's see how this gas goes in through the air. So through the mere analysis, I can see that the air goes in here, the hot air goes in, the freezing cold water goes in to freeze the air, and then the air gets freeze, the cold compressed air goes into a separator, carbon dioxide goes out as dry ice, because dry ice is the only state that carbon dioxide could exist in. It can exist as a liquid, it could only exist in two states in our current pressures, as a solid and as a gas. It instantly sublimates into a gas. As as a solid form because it can't maintain a liquid form with our current pressures in our earth environment so the carbon dioxide becomes ice dry ice becomes cold enough to freeze gets separated the liquid air goes through an expansion jet nitrogen and argon are let out liquid oxygen is collected which honestly liquid oxygen is bluish but I don't see neon here but I wouldn't expect to see it considering the fact that the percentage of the air is 0.0018 percentage of it and that's a very small percentage of neon that's in the air around us that we breathe it makes sense that we don't breathe 
in a lot of neon or else we would asphyxiate and wouldn't be able to breathe. It makes sense that there's more oxygen, more nitrogen. In fact, there's not even more oxygen than there is nitrogen. 78% of the air that we breathe is nitrogen. It's inert. We don't even notice that we're breathing it. The air that we need is only consistent of 20% of the air that we breathe. That is insane. We only need the air to be at a 20% concentration of the air that we need for our survival. I wonder what the results would be if oxygen levels were suddenly increased in the earth. But that goes off topic. We'll talk more about that when we discuss the elements oxygen and nitrogen. This is the general description of how neon gets turned from a gas in the air into a solid. Just like the other elements, it goes through the same process. We cool it down using things that are already cold and we send it through the conveyor belt and eventually it turns into something that we can observe, use, and feel in the form of liquids and solids. And we'll end it with there. Thank you guys so much for joining us in the discussion of how neon is created and the history and all of its uses. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.